Nothing gives an indication of how Britain has got into its stride for war better than the progress made by the Home Guard in three years. From a large, untrained and unwieldy mass of enthusiastic amateurs has grown the biggest regiment in the world, fit to fight anyone and smart enough to guard Buckingham Palace. The honour of guarding the royal palaces is not offered without good cause. That this offer is conferred upon the Home Guard is a tribute to the hard work and devotion of the largest and least expensive part-time army ever raised. Sunday was the day chosen for the official celebrations, and we select from all of them a few that were typical. This is the great Wembley Stadium, where in peacetime they were spectators cheering a football final. This day they were the players, ready for the roughest game in the world. One unit marched past Buckingham Palace from Wellington Barracks to Westminster Abbey for a special service. Last war veterans and boys awaiting call-up have merged into a well-balanced, self-sufficient fighting unit. Training and discipline have given them the steadiness of seasoned troops. Knowledge has given them self-confidence. They carried their rifles into the Abbey for this service, a most unusual thing for church parades in Britain. But the War Office ordered that arms should be carried on all parades this anniversary. Thus. This most unusual privilege was accorded to the Home Guard. And so to the main parade, the march past the King in Hyde Park. This indeed is a very great advance from the days when local defence volunteers stood guard and heights all over Britain, threatened with invasion, equipped with an armlet and a thermos flask. No words are needed to describe it. The discipline and obvious efficiency of what is really an amateur army speak highly enough for themselves. It would be nice if these pictures could be seen by Dr. Goebbels and the High Command in Germany. It would tell them volumes about the sort of welcome they'll get if they try an invasion of Britain. <laughs> 